Hey guys, we're just uh, we're just checking to see uh, where Levon is in terms of her journey here. We're going to give her another couple of minutes before we start. Uh, Ms. Lewis is in the parking lot. We should be ready to begin very shortly. Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you everyone, one and all, for joining us this afternoon. A very celebratory afternoon indeed. Uh, I would like to go ahead, since I think we have everyone who's going to be attending uh, with us, and uh, if you could do the roll call. Do we have anyone on the phone as well? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we'll do the roll call now. Uh, 
Um, Dr. Jameson. Here. Very good. Dr. Grinstein. Here. Ms. Lewis. Here. Ms. Wilson. Ms. Clark. Here. Mr. Melendrez. Here. Ms. Aiello. Here. Mr. King. Here. And Ms. Nielsen. Here. We have a quorum, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. I'd like this take uh, time now for all public comments, and we'd like to start in the north. Do we have any public comments in the north? No, we do not. Do we, thank you. Do we have any public comments in the south? No, there are no public comments. Thank you. I would like to first, since we do have a quorum, go ahead and proceed with the approval of the minutes from January 14th, 2016 board meeting. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. We have a first and second. Was there any uh, comments, discussions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That was unanimous. The minutes for January 14, 2016 have been approved. And my favorite part of the meeting, the executive report. And may I say before I hear it, it was beautifully written. And I have to tell you, I really appreciate it. And I'm sure every member here appreciates, as well as the public, having that printed. Thank you so much for going through the extra work. Thank you, Madam Chair. Bruce Gilbert, uh, for the record. And uh, uh, I'm happy to go through the extra work and go ahead and uh, commit my thoughts to paper and actually have them printed out. Uh, they don't change much between the, 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 the two, but... but uh, I'm happy to do as you had asked. Um, when we last met, I shared with the board my assessment that the exchange and its staff and our partners, with our marketing partners and our broker and agent partners and our community partners, had done everything possible to assure that the 2016 plan year open enrollment would be successful. And I'm pleased to report that, at least in my opinion, uh, I seem to have been right. Uh, we've had a second consecutive year of record enrollment numbers. Uh, this past open enrollment season, 88,145 Nevadans purchased affordable health plans through the exchange. Two years ago, that number was just over 35,000. Last year, it was roughly 73,000. That rate of growth, and I, I've shared this with other folks, that rate of growth would make any private enterprise proud. And I think it speaks well of both our strategy and our execution. And numbers like those do not happen in a vacuum. And I would publicly thank our carrier partners, Nevada's agent and broker communities, Penna Powers, the Ramirez Group, our navigator groups, and particularly the board for its encouragement, support, and trust. I'd also note the staff didn't do a half bad job either. Um, last year's focus on improving and streamlining the consumer enrollment experience and making it easier for Nevadans to apply for and enroll in health plans helped us significantly with regard to uh, uh, our enrollment numbers. But uh, access to improved and stable technology is really only part of the story. We made a number of changes in our approach to open enrollment this year, including moving away from enrollment stores in order to uh, expand our geographical presence, if you will, um, and sharpening our messaging. Uh, continuous outreach efforts, a focus on consumer advocacy and assistance, and the active engagement of our broker and agent partners combined to make the most recent open enrollment certainly our most successful. Um, later today, uh, sorry, I had uh, an email come through. Later today, you'll be considering the staff's recommendation that the board increase our fee from 3% to 3.15% of the pre-subsidized premium generated by QHPs and standalone dental plans sold through the exchange. Um, I think everybody understands that that recommendation is a result of hours of work 
and analysis. And I would particularly thank our Chief Operating Officer and our Chief Financial Officer for their work on this. Um, and that was all prompted by CMS's recent issuance of a proposed notice of benefit and payment parameters for 2017, which sets the user fee for state-based marketplaces, which utilize federal eligibility and enrollment infrastructure, at 3% of the pre-subsidized premium generated by those QHPs and dental plans. Um, the proposed increase, we believe, allows our agency to perform all of the duties imposed by both state and federal statute without unnecessarily increasing the premiums paid by Nevadans for their health plans, and it provides our carrier partners with certainty as they work to develop their rates for 2017. Uh, moreover, our fee structure will remain significantly lower than that of the federally facilitated marketplace and is projected to save Nevada's consumers nearly a million dollars annually, and that assumes that CMS is able somehow to maintain its uh, assessment at 3.5% over the coming years, which, frankly, I very much doubt. Um, also, as a result of the proposed notice of benefit and payment parameters, staff continues to explore commercially available proven existing, less expensive alternatives to the federal technology platform and call center. As the board is aware, I've had ongoing communications with CMS urging that the proposed user fee be revised to an amount that would assure that a small state marketplace such as ours is able to retain sufficient revenues to meet our statutory duties under federal and state law, not simply pay for technology. The responses to those communications have unfortunately offered no opportunity for compromise or further discussion. Um, we're watching a number of things. Uh, certainly the responses to the RFP issued by our friends in Oregon, which are due on March 4th, uh, will be closely following their consideration of what they are looking for and, and calling comprehensive competitive proposals, which would allow them to end their reliance on the federal infrastructure as we would. Um, additionally, toward the end of March, I'll be meeting with Jim Wadley, the CEO of Connecticut's Public Health Insurance Exchange, to discuss the potential for a partnership in shared services between our two states. Uh, similar discussions may be scheduled with leaders of other state-based marketplaces to assure that we understand all of the options that may be available to Nevada as we move forward. Um, I would offer one last comment to the board before concluding my remarks today. We've always known that eventually CMS would require and ask for payment for access to the federal platform and use of the federal call center. And Nevada has always been prepared and remains prepared to fairly compensate CMS for the value of those services. CMS, for whatever reason, has chosen to set the user fee for those services at a level which I believe Nevada simply cannot afford and which will harm our consumers. Well, we do not know what the final version of the Notice of Benefit of Payment Parameters will provide, I think uh, Ms. Lewis's remarks at our last meeting were absolutely prophetic. If we remain on healthcare.gov and continue to utilize the federal infrastructure, we will always be at the mercy of CMS. The fee for that will be whatever Washington decides, and that is not a good place to be. Um, We've accomplished a lot over these last two years. We've had two record-breaking enrollments. We've seen the greatest decline in the number of uninsured children in the nation. And as Mr. Melendres has been kind enough to point out, uh, we've had the greatest progress of any state in reducing the number of uninsured Hispanic and Latino children. Uh, we've also learned that technology and exchange are not synonymous terms. They're not interchangeable. Technology is one of the tools used by exchanges to accomplish their mission but it is not the only tool. Marketing and outreach efforts directly impact an exchange's ability to attract and retain enough enrollees to assure a sustainable health risk mix in the enrolled population. High enrollment equals a greater number of healthy enrollees, which in turn translates directly into lower premiums. Attracting healthy individuals to the marketplace and encouraging them to buy health coverage is a key component of exchange sustainability and it requires continuous and consistent messaging and outreach efforts that we would not be able to afford if we were to ship 3% of the premiums in terms of a fee to our friends in the federal government. Uh, reducing the uninsured population of Nevada is important work, and frankly, it's too important to be left to federal agencies and bureaucracies, in my opinion. 
Over the coming months, as we learn more about the user fee and affordable options, I am confident that the board will take whatever steps are necessary to protect Nevada's consumers and to assure that the exchange is able to continue to provide access to quality, affordable health plans to Nevadans throughout our state. And that, Madam Chair, is the sum and substance of my remarks, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Mr. Gilbert, it is just absolutely an outstanding report and such a pleasure with a rocky start to hear such a positive report. I have to thank, as you did, everyone, including first and foremost, yourself and your wonderful leadership since you have arrived and helped transform the exchange. A job very few people wanted. And I just have to also thank, as you did, the other people that have been so critical in helping us make this happen. The, the carrier partners, the Nevada agents and broker community that have really come on board big time in this last year. Also, Penna Powers and the Ramirez Group and our navigators, it has been a real team effort that have brought us to our record levels. And as you said, and Jose Melendres has pointed out, and the additional late entry has pointed out, the children, Hispanic population, it is so impressive that the number of Nevada children without health insurance fell by 33% in one year period, dropping from 20% in 2013 to 13.3%. In 2014, the greatest, largest percentage point decline in the country. I think we really have to feel we have come a long way in our vision of making sure most Nevadans have health insurance and access to health care. And I just have to say, bravo, job well done. And we're just going to march forward under your leadership with our new plans, which are very exciting. I want to thank several of the board members that attended some of the meetings last month where you discussed how you've been meeting with some of the other businesses that have other software, other platforms that we can utilize. I was in on those meetings, and I will say that the only thing I would add to your report is when you said that we have been exploring commercial available proven, less expensive alternative to federal technology platform and call centers, that the ones that we were interviewing were actually not only just proven and, and less expensive, but far superior than even the federal platform. So thank you, Bruce, and I welcome other comments. Madam Chair, LeVon Lewis for the record. I would just like to also add my congratulations to our executive director and the staff for um, the uh, being able to pull off, I guess, uh, this uh, tremendous uh, increase in enrollment. Having lived through all of the days of this exchange, I am uh, uh, very uh, pleased to, to uh, come to a meeting where we actually have no public complaints. You know, so, so that's really very, very refreshing. So I, um, I too would like to congratulate you and the staff and, and all of the people involved in um, this uh, miraculous uh, achievement. Thank you. Do we have any comments from the north? All right. That being said, we will move ahead on our agenda for possible action, the adoption of the 2017 per member per month fee to be charged to insurers currently at 3% and the motion is to take it to 3.15%. Do I uh, hear any motions? Then we can have discussion. I 
I move to approve the uh, Levon Lewis of the record. And I move to approve the increase in uh, the per member per month uh, monthly fee. Second. We have a first and a second. Are there any discussion? Is there any discussion or questions? We could direct them to Mr. Gilbert. Thank you. Hearing none, I'd like to call the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The vote is unanimous and the motion is approved. Marketing and open enrollment update. Will we be starting down here or up north? Jeanette? Janelle Davis for the record, communications officer. Um, the Nevada Exchange, is, as Bruce alluded to, has survived its third open enrollment. And we believe the exchange has made significant strides to reduce Nevadans' uninsured population. We've had a second consecutive year of record-breaking enrollment numbers with over 88,000 individuals who applied for and enrolled in qualified health plans this open enrollment period. Our messaging this year was specifically designed to reach underinsured consumer populations, and we continued our outreach efforts throughout the enrollment period to build those relationships. Our media and advertising campaign received positive feedback and overall coverage was very positive for Nevada HealthLink and the exchange. Although open enrollment has ended, work is far from being over. The exchange will be collaborating with various stakeholders to work on an off-season campaign in order to reach our underserved and uninsured target populations. We will be focusing on the tribes, rural areas, multicultural entities, the Hispanic population, and the self-employed. We will continue to work to better identify those consumers still uninsured and the best channels on how to reach them. Uh, Penna Powers will review our January events and the close of open enrollment, as well as our planned off-season efforts to create and increase brand awareness during the interim. Thank you, Janelle. Good afternoon, Patty Hallibuck for the record. And unfortunately, um, Andres, my partner in crime, couldn't be here this afternoon. He's home dealing with a household of sick folks. So we wish him well. I have a brief marketing update for you today. Um, a lot of things are currently in process in terms of analysis and wrap up, which we'll be able to share comprehensively with you next month. Along those lines, as I mentioned, overall the marketing campaign, we're working on a wrap-up and analysis as well as the same for outreach and events. As Janelle mentioned, uh, we have begun some initial discussions and strategy planning for a off-season um, education and awareness campaign, emphasizing the roles in tribal areas, as Janelle mentioned, throughout the state. There are also some ongoing updates and improvements to underway with NevadaHealthLink.com as well. As far as marketing goes, I'd just like to touch base on some of the January push highlights that we implemented. What we did in January was fortify the month, being the last month of enrollment, with some advertising efforts to ensure that the messaging got out there and got out there in a very strong way. So we added to our general market TV buy in both the north and the south. Uh, we expanded, including all the various networks and highly watched stations, as well as programming. This took place both in the north and south. And in addition to the impressions we already had discussed in last month's marketing, we added another 260,000 impressions for northern Nevada and another 1.3 for southern Nevada. Same with radio. We fortified those buys in both northern and southern Nevada. In northern Nevada, we, we had some opportunities to increase uh, the number of radio stations and do so with several of them um, in a bonus situation. So we didn't actually have to pay for that added coverage. That's why you see several more in the north and the south. So we certainly want to take advantage of that, and we did so. The impressions we added in the north were 594,000. 
and in the south, a little over 1.4 million. With regard to print, we maintained a very consistent print buy throughout the, the uh, advertising period. Um, most of our print in the 17 publications was aimed at reaching the rural populations. In addition to that, we did an additional um, postcard mailer drop early in January, the first week in January, that specifically targeted the rural zips throughout the state. And that was approximately 33,000 that it dropped to. I'd just like to mention, too, that we didn't fortify our Hispanic buy for the month of January, as we felt that overall that, that niche was, was pretty saturated. With digital media, we used some extra dollars to fortify the video portion. Uh, we added an additional 600,000 video impressions on Pandora. These were um, impressions and views of our branded spots as well as our Governor Sandoval video. We also ran some additional Google search ads, um, anticipating there was a higher uh, amount of searching going on in the last month of the campaign, which there was. And we'll have more specific analytics for you next month on those. For social media, um, in addition to our Facebook ads, we added two campaigns, one on Twitter and one on Instagram. Um, almost 3 million impressions during the month of January took place as a result. And we were able to reach almost 500,000 Nevadans in the month of January which is a fairly significant increase over December. 53,793 53, engagements took place um, on NevadaHealthLink.com um, via social media. That represents 28.4% increase from December. And engagement actually means somebody from social media actually clicked a link and went onto the NevadaHealthLinks.com site. So that was pretty exciting and impressive. With regard to PR and media relations, we had another fabulous month in January. There were 44 stories, 100% of the coverage we felt was balanced or positive. About 30% of those stories contained a Schick's spokesperson. With regard to coverage of our specific closeout events on January 30th, we had 16 stories. Um, and the estimated value of that coverage, just for the time frame of the week leading up to the final enrollment was about 22,500, so it was great exposure for us. The following pages just detail out the specific coverage for you. And then lastly, on behalf of Andres, I'll just touch on our closeout events. They were very well attended. Um, we had great weather again here in Las Vegas, so we saw a lot of people out and about. There were approximately 500 uh, attendees here at Clark County Government Center in the south. We had about 22 brokers attending um, and additional uh, navigators, about 25 of them. And there are approximately 73 QHP forms completed. In the north, we hosted the event at the McKinley Arts and Culture Center, which was a great venue. Um, the weather, however, was a little bit different there. You can see from the photo. <laughs> In spite of that, though, there was pretty good attendance, 350. Um, we had six brokers and four navigators and about 25 QHP forms completed there. So um, the events were well attended by various partners as well. It was a health fair format again, and there was lots of activity throughout the day. As I mentioned, it's sort of a short summary at this point, but if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer for you. Does anyone have any questions or comments? You may. There we go. Uh, Bruce Gilbert, uh, for the record, there are two things that I think were really important over the course of this last open enrollment effort. Um, and the first had to do with social media and digital. I will tell you, and Patty will tell you, and Janelle will tell you, that I was a very reluctant participant in moving us onto social media and uh, digital and the, a digital platform. Um, I steadfastly refused to do that the first year that I was here because uh, our consumers and others were unkind to us. 
um, when it came to Facebook and other platforms, and invariably the communication channels that we attempted to open ended up being negative. And I was deeply concerned, notwithstanding the fact that last year was a good year and that we had had a good enrollment experience, that that could recur. Nonetheless, Patty and Janelle and others wore me down and they said, this is the appropriate way for us to, uh, to be able to open uh, an important communication channel and to have essentially a conversation. And it's particularly important with some of our uh, demographics, uh, the Hispanic community and millennials. And uh, so they, they pulled me dragging and kicking. And, and, and I will be absolutely delighted to say it was an excellent strategy. Um, and I appreciate the fact that everybody took the time and, and the effort to make me change my mind because it was the right thing to do. Um, the second thing is we didn't have enrollment stores this year, and there was much made of that in the media. Oh, my goodness, people won't know where to go. Oh, my goodness, you've taken a step back, as opposed to our finances dictate that we try and make ourselves more geographically uh, diverse and available rather than spending basically hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to have a single source for people to go and sign up in. We weren't sure how it, that was going to work at all. But I believe that, that with the assistance of Penna Powers and their, their marketing and with the assistance of our uh, broker and agent partners, that that proved to be a very, very, very strong and cost-effective strategy for us. And I think that that taught us much. And those were my comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Is that good? I appreciate your reticence because uh, we didn't want to start to generate a lot of negative feedback. And uh, it's a good thing that you changed your mind. And I do believe that even Steve Jobs occasionally was convinced to change his mind. And it was an amazing result. They're so impressive, the social media data. And the one thing we are constantly told is that uh, that population that we are often trying to reach, uh, the lower income working, is that regardless of what they may not have, they almost all have a smartphone and they manage their affairs on them, everything from paying their bills to signing up for health insurance. So it was an extremely smart thing to do on their smartphones. And it's very exciting because when we talked about going forward, getting onto a new platform, a new company with their uh, really Star Wars technology, we were so blown away by it when we were there, when, when we were getting, hearing their presentations. And the best technology they had was their mobile apps which literally could take a person through in about 90 seconds in enrollment. And so as, as um, well as we've done, in the future, I anticipate we are going to have even a more user-friendly, more customer-rich experience, and even more amazing results. So thanks for further opening the doors of modern technology. Thank you, Madam Chair. One more comment, and it's something I never thought I would see. If you look on the page labeled PR Media Relations, for January 2016, 100% of the coverage was balanced or positive. I can't, I can't ever, ever remember anything like that before. So that's, that's, that's a huge win um, all the way around. So thank you. Thank you. Even with Twitter, social media going on. Okay, who filtered out the bad ones? <laughs> All right. Are there any comments from the North? Well, not, not hearing any. I would like to just go right on into uh, discussion and pause. Oh, one comment on the report that you made I did want to bring up because, LaVon, you brought it up at the end of uh, Ramirez's presentation last time. Uh, having to do with the events and uh, when you asked the number of the people attended and we discussed it and we were talking about events now 
and it left an impression that some of the that the events were not drawing very many people. And I just wanted to clarify after that that uh, Ramirez addressed the issue and explained it was a holiday weekend, and that was an exceptional event that he used as an example. And that particular event drew very low numbers, but it was an exception to the rule, as you can see by the events they use today and in general. So I just wanted to clarify, because we said last time, almost wondering, raising a concern, were the events very effective with the numbers falling off? Were they falling off? And indeed, because there were like two holidays wrapped around that one particular event, the one example he chose to use, it wasn't impressive. Every other one was outstanding, well attended. And so I just want to clarify that because we left it as a loose end. Yeah, Madam Chairman, Bruce Gilbert, for the record, one of the things that we learned on the very first day of open enrollment this time out was tough to get people out on a Sunday. Okay, so, so in fact, when we did our closing events, although the last day, the 31st, was on a Sunday, we specifically scheduled them for the Saturday before, for the 30th. And I think that, that that had a significant impact in terms of the number of people that we saw come through those events. Excellent. And I think that made us really wind up with a home run. So having uh, added that last bit, if there are no other comments, then uh, discussion of possible action items for the future. Levon. Levan Lewis, for the record. Well, I'm sure that we will have to continue to see what we will do in terms of looking at an independent um, computer system to operate our exchange. That's not the proper words, but that's what first came into mind. So that, of course, should be an ongoing item that we will be considering going forward. And uh, I, we will also be looking at uh, how we will market to the communities that were identified uh, in the report. Uh, that are still in need of some additional marketing in order to get their enrollment numbers up. Rural communities and Native American communities. Uh, and African American communities. <laughs> uh, very good, Levon. Uh, last time we had mentioned about updating on that very topic, but at this point, it's literally all of the information is being gathered and it wasn't time for a presentation. I suspect by our next meeting, Bruce will have been uh, will have uh, uh, done a few more interviews, such as the Connecticut one. Talked about uh, partnering and solo, and we'll be able to start a preliminary discussion, or at least share some of the information he's gathered at our next meeting. Yeah, uh, Madam Chair, uh, for the record, Bruce Gilbert, um, a meeting actually with Connecticut at the end of next month. So I won't have anything prior to our to our meeting. However, the expectation is that the uh, final rule with regard to the uh, notice of benefit and payment parameters <coughs> excuse me will be <coughs> will be coming out at the end of this month or very early, very early next so it is something that we'll be able to cover at the board meeting for sure thank you very much <coughs> Ma madam chair lavon lewis just for the record and at some point i would like to just get an update as to what is our status with xerox if we have any you know, at this point, and is that totally resolved, or do we still have some work that needs to be done in that arena? Uh, Mr. Gilbert? Second before future. There we go. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, we have no ongoing relationship with Xerox. Um, we uh, work through the uh, Attorney General's office and with their counsel, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, um, concluded our business relationship and in a in a public forum it's difficult to say much more than that but certainly that's the case um, Dennis was instrumental in that as was as were other members of the Attorney General staff but generally speaking um, we don't owe them any more money uh, we won't be having any more business relations with them and it has in fact concluded uh, Dennis would that be a, a fair and accurate statement <clears throat> I would go, <clears throat> excuse me, Dennis Belcourt, Deputy Attorney General, for the record. Uh, <clears throat> I think um, I notice we're, we are on the future item agendas or agenda item topic, so I don't want to go into any detail on this because it really hasn't been agendized. But yes, I'd say that's a fair and accurate statement. Thanks. Okay. 
<laughs> Thank you so much. And I think what uh, Levon might be referring to as well, if I may say, Levon, is that uh, when we had some of the discussions towards the end about some of the issues, problems that have been generated, such as uh, some of the the um, uh, the tax uh, reconciliation problems, uh, we were uh, told that we'd probably get a follow up on. Uh, some of those things that have been put in various baskets. And although we knew that we weren't going to get any accurate numbers, that we were going to have an idea of how a lot of the issues, unresolved issues with certain of our clients, how close we had come to concluding a majority, although we fully understood that some of them might never be concluded. And I think Levon and I were curious to know of that, all those issues, where we stand. Luana, for the record, I was just requesting that we would have a future agenda item that would just give us a, a review of whatever whatever the status was, if, if it was fully concluded. Thank so you. Bruce, yes, for the future. Not for today. Yeah. Right. right. Uh, Bruce Gilbert, for the record, we'll, we'll certainly attend to that. Thank you so much. We're, uh, in the north, do we have any other agenda items you might like to Add for the next meeting. Sorry, Jose Melendez for the record. Just have one quick. Given the success that the staff had and in the efforts of um, uh, the mic. Oh, there we go. Sorry, what is it? Shoot, it's cutting out. Could you maybe share a mic with somebody else? It's not working? Yeah. Oh, it is when you put it close to you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so my question was just um, what is going to be the process for promoting the success that we've had? In, in like, and I'm thinking like, like with the Latin Chamber, there have been some direct pieces or something that we would send out to those folks. Hey, look at, look at what was accomplished um, in year three now that we, we move this forward. What is, you know, or for future conversation, what would that process be like just to really promote the success that this has had? Right. Um, uh, Bruce Gilbert, for the record, we have a number of off-cycle uh, activities that we go through with respect to uh, to marketing and promotion. We'll cover those in the next board meeting. So that will be added in addition. So then we have the um, three additional items. Um, I remember item number two and three, which was a follow-up on some of the uh, issues regarding our uh, dissatisfied unresolved client issues. Uh, after Xerox closed, and then this item of the ongoing PR in, in the interval. What was that first item? Oh, a follow-up uh, on, well, actually, a presentation, uh, a status report on everything you've been able to gleam in your research interviews and meetings, even though it will be prior to the end of March when you have a large interview to discuss some of the potential options of combining with other states, but at least whatever you have up to that point. So those are three additional items. Anything else? Very good. And so any other uh, concerns about the next date time? No concerns. We'll move right on to any public comment. Do we have any public comment in the north? See none, we have no public comment in the South, so I'll take a motion for adjournment. So moved, seconded. The meeting is adjourned. And thank you all for attending today and for everything you do. Have a great day.